Commemorative quarters, what is the value of yours? We'll be dissecting bicentennial quarters in this video and explaining why they're currently fetching such high prices on the internet. You won't want to miss a single detail we cover in this video, so pay attention now. Take a close look at this coin. All of that for $19,200. We'll demonstrate to you why it's all for so much money and how should you find a coin to maximize its value. Let's get started with this video sup right away. We have a bicentennial quarter from 1976. That was excellent. Purchase PCGs in Mint State 67. This coin right here is extremely uncommon because it was minting in AD. Mark on the coin's lower right corner. Considering that the Denver Mint, where this coin was made, is represented by D Mint Rock. Remember that this particular coin is something that you can find in your pocket change. Given that this one was graded so highly that it sold for $104, it's possible that the condition has changed, which is a significant factor. Now let's examine this coin. The first thing you'll notice on this exact coin is the fact that it has some very fiery red going on around the rim edge area of the coin. That is a naturally current oxidation process called toning. Now, toning can either increase or decrease the value of your coin based on how the coin looks to the collector, right? The eye appeal. If the eye appeal is good, if it looks good, then it will increase the value. There are tons of coins that have bad eye appeal that decreases the value because of the toning. This specific example was graded by NGC at a mint, say 67 star S. It is not every day that you see the star designation given by a grading company. That's because they thought this example was phenomenal for the grade and because of all this information. That is why it's up for $372, 8,400 bucks for this 1976 bicentennial quarter. This one was graded by PCGS at a mint state 66. Now the big factor here is the fact that this is a DDO or double die obverse coin. Obverse means the front of the coin, reverse means the back of the coin. Now it may be a little bit hard to see, but doubling is happening here on the front of the coin. Sometimes it's more obvious than others. This one is a bit more subtle. You're going to need some sort of magnification to see what's going on here. I can see a bit going on at the top near Liberty there. Some other areas are a bit harder to see. However, if you have a 1976 bicentennial quarter that is a double die offers like this one, you're in for a real treat, guys, because this example sold on heritage auctions for $8,400. Here we have it, $19,200 for this 1976 bicentennial quarter. Now I want to show you the back of this coin. On the back right-hand side, you're going to see some weird things happening here. I mean, this coin got graded at the 69 grade, which is quite amazing to think about if there's this damage happening here. So what I think this is, is there is a bit of issues happening with the planche mixture, which caused this to happen. Now, if there's a little piece of different metal in the coin, it can oxidize and change the coloration around the coin. Sometimes people will touch up some areas with some chemicals to make it go away, and then when it's in the holder, it will actually oxidize and change colors over time. Long story short, even with this coloration issue going on in the back, right, because this coin graded so highly, and it's a silver coin, it sold for $19,200. Now, if you want to sell your coin for the most amount of money, this is what we recommend step by step. First of all, do not bring it to a pawn shop because there is a good likelihood that that pawn shop owner does not know anything about coins, and if they do, maybe they're trying to rip you off. So what you want to do is get the opinion of at least three different coin shops. That way you know you're maximizing the value of your coin. If you don't want to go through the trouble of going shop by shop, driving around trying to find a shop that's not trying to rip you off, what you can do is join the Coin Value Club down below and send us a picture of your coin. We'll let you know how much it's worth and how to maximize the value when you go ahead and sell it online or in person. Let's hop into this last coin. And now this is a Mint Air. So this bicentennial quarter was accidentally overstruck on a 1967 dime. This is what we call double denomination air coin. This one graded by NGC at a proof 67. This coin sold for a staggering $15,000. Now, if you have a coin like any of the ones in this video, make sure you hold on to them and keep them safe. And we will see you in the next one. All right, folks, get ready for a wild ride. Today, we're diving into the fascinating world of 1979 Susan B. Anthony dollars. Now, most of these coins won't leave you rolling in dough, but hey, I've got a special treat for you. 
Hold on to your hats as I reveal some jaw-dropping examples that fetched a pretty penny. Take a gander at this 1979 D1 Susan B. Anthony coin created by none other than NGC and minted at Denver Mint. Now, where your coin comes from can sway its value, but the grade is a game changer. We're talking perfection here, people. A grade of 70 is the ultimate prize. And this baby? It's just two points shy of that flawless grade sitting pretty at 68. Okay, in this video, we'll discuss some 1979 Susan B. Anthony coins that sold for a lot of money. Although the majority of these coins won't be very valuable, I'll show you a few examples that sold for a lot of money in this video. Here is a dollar one Susan B. Anthony coin from 1979D that was struck by NGC in Mint State 68. The Denver Mint, where this currency was produced, is indicated by the D-Min mark on the left side of the coin. The mintage of a coin will determine its value depending on where it is produced, but a more important consideration. And guess what? This unicorn of a coin sold for a whopping $1,527. That's one shiny piece of history. So whether you're a seasoned collector or new to the game, these coins have stories to tell. Stay tuned because we're about to unravel the mysteries of numismatic wonders. The letter grade is R. The maximum grade we can receive is a 70. This coin's 68 grade puts it just two points short of the ideal grade of 70. Therefore, S. Susan B. Anthony coin for $1,527 up the next week in 1979. This one was given an MS 68 grade by PC Jess. Once more, two points behind, but this time it was a San Francisco mint coin. That S-men mark denotes just that. Also keep in mind that when combined with other elements like the date, the mint mark, and the quality, Selling your coin does matter. For a Susan B. Anthony coin, this one went for $3,000,818, which is a significant sum of money. This one is fairly simple. If, if you ever come across a Susan B. Anthony coin that resembles this, you might be able to purchase something. This 1979 S. Susan B. Anthony dollar coin, which sold for $7,475, was inadvertently minted on a cent plant sheet larger by PCGS, say, 64. The coin in question is a 1979 P dollar one, Susan B. Anthony coin. This one currently has the P mint mark. Coins don't typically have a P mint mark. Simply said, there won't be a mark. And by extension, it follows that the coin was intended to be this one with the PCG's grade. I intended to say 67 plus. Although the plus designation might not appear important, it actually raises the worth of all things, everything together. By clicking the subscribe button, you can allow this coin to sell for $6,462. Let us really have it out with you two. Return with them. I'm grateful for more. In the following video, I'll see you.